Dad has got sawdust on the carpet again. Look at these bad boys. In this video we're going to be using both pressure and vacuum to create these hybrid light pools. Stay tuned. And I'm going to be trying these easy wood carbide tools for the first time. So see how I got on. And a bonus feature at the end where I show my heated casting cabinet so I don't get in trouble with my wife anymore. You may recall from a previous video that I said I could do with some carbide tools because I'm starting to do a bit of work with some resin and carbide tools are certainly very very useful for that. Well I was contacted by Easywood Tools in the USA and they said would you like to try some of our tools and of course I said yes and uh, they've arrived and they are awesome. I've got the full size tools and uh, well let's do them in order. I've got a full size easy rougher which has got the uh, square head on it. Tungsten. We have uh, then got the full size finisher which has got the round head. The full size easy detailer which has got the pointed tip. As you can see very well packaged tools and uh, the finish on these is amazing they really are quality items um, don't despair all those who are traditionalists because I know I'm sort of more known for using uh, traditional turning tools and I love my um, my Robert Sorby uh, gouges and chisels um, and they are, and I will not be stopping using those. Uh, I really do love my Robert Sorby tools. Um, but there are times, as I say, when carbide tools are what I want. You know, for doing the resin work, uh, it's certainly very helpful. Um, and really, then they're, they're not going to take over my um, turning, but they're going to be an addition to my armory. You know, that's. Uh, more tools at my disposals for different scenarios um, but yeah you'll be seeing some more of these in uh, upcoming videos uh, and uh, we'll try and uh, demonstrate them on some resin and stuff this is a piece of walnut that was very kindly given to me by Barry Cook of Barry Cook Hardwoods he gave me this at UKIS and here I am using my easy wood easy rougher these tools are designed to be used with the cutting edge bang on centre and you've got to keep the tool dead level. It's just here neatening up the ends and I'm running backwards and forwards just getting a nice uniform cylinder. Just checking the diameter because it's got to be exact to fit the mould. Marking the length. Just using one of my Robert Sorby parting tools. Point tool and then back to my parting tool. And I'm now cutting some recesses for the resin. I've got it mounted in my um, Robert Sorby Patriot chuck here. Just deepening some recesses. Just leaving quite a thin spindle down the middle. I'm trying to do it so there's just enough wood left to uh, hold its shape. There we go, that's the finished job. And I'm now parting off and doing the second one because so I've got two out of each piece of wood. Just cutting the grooves in the second one. As you can see, it's quite thin in the middle. Bit of sanding. There we go. And there's four. Here they are, baking in the oven. Here are my blanks in from the garage. Uh, all nice and dry. 
and uh, we're going to put these in this plastic jug a bit of mesh in the bottom there just to keep them slightly off the bottom so it helps the air escape from the wood and we'll just stack these in then we'll put another piece of mesh on the top and a weight just hold it all down I'm going to um, mix the stabilizing resin there uh, so important read the instructions really carefully with all of these resins and anything like that it's essential to read all the instructions so first thing I do put some gloves on there's the resin and there's the uh, catalyzer catalyst and it's uh, it says it's very important to shake this thoroughly I've already given it a good shake but I'll shake it a bit more as well then we're going to add the entire contents into the resin there we go and we shall give it a good shake then we're going to add the uh, resin, the stabilising resin and I've done it so we're about an inch over the top of the blanks that'll allow for it to soak in because the level will drop as it's absorbed into the wood here I am putting the uh, jug into the vacuum chamber this was the vacuum chamber and pump that I got from HVAC store as soon as you turn the pump on the wood starts to fizz and the beauty of shaping the wood before doing this is that it will stabilize a lot quicker there's a lot more end grain exposed it also speeds up the drying process as well but it certainly makes for a very thorough stabilization and after a while you get a steady stream of bubbles and then the bubbles eventually stop rising and you can slowly equalize the pressure and just do this slowly just let the air back in so it's back to atmospheric pressure I then left the blanks in the jug for 24 hours so that the resin could be pulled back into the wood where the air had been pulled out. Each blank is then tightly wrapped in aluminium foil. So I gradually do each one individually. This helps them cure evenly and keeps the resin from running out. Any leftover resin can be reused. They were then baked for two hours in the toaster oven. While I'm uh, waiting for the wood to cook with the stabilising resin in it, I'll give you a closer look at these um, easy wood tools. Now I've got them out of the packaging, I'll show you them a bit better. We'll start with the uh, easy wood easy rougher. This is the full size version. Uh, and they're all colour coded so all the roughing tools have got the orange handles and, uh, and as you can see I'll give you a close up of the carbide tip a bit dusty because I've been using it but, uh, it's roughly square it's got a slight radius on the end on the edges and you can rotate it round as one edge gets blunt you can undo it with the supplied allen key and turn it round and that's the uh, easy rougher and we've got the easy wood easy finisher colour coded red handle and these handles are very nicely finished nicely lacquered and if we come to the tip we've got the little round cutter on that one which you can also rotate as it dulls. And last, but by no means least, we have the Easy Detailer from Easy Wood Tools. And that's colour coded yellow. And same sort of handle. And there's the tip, which you can also turn round as it dulls. Sounding good. Better unwrap them. See what they look like. Well, 
It was a bit fiddly unwrapping them but quite exciting to see how they'd come out and the resin had cured really nicely. You can see there's a little bit of flash in places, a little bit of excess resin. You can see the cured resin there. Very pleased with that. Back out to the workshop with them now. Back out to the workshop with the blanks mounted between step centres and I'm using the Easy Wood Tools Easy Rougher and I'm, what I'm doing here is just truing them up again and uh, you know, truing up the ends and then using my Robert Sorby parting tool here just to remove the flash. These are the blanks all uh, cleaned up on the lathe so I've got the walnut and uh, what I think is sapili and remember these that I made, these moulds I made in the uh, vacuum chamber video and the silicon moulds and uh, they're made specifically for doing these blanks so what we've got to try and do is get these into here There we are, one done. And the other one done. It was then that I had another thought. I thought I better just tape up the ends so that they don't stick together with the uh, resin. So I covered the ends with a little bit of painter's tape and this uh, will just help greatly actually getting them apart once I've put the resin in. I've put a bit of tape around them just to uh, stop the sides of the mould bowing out when I fill it with resin but essentially they're ready to be uh, cast and put in the pressure pot. I'm going to be using MBFG clear top 5 epoxy resin for this and here I'm pouring out the resin weighing it very very carefully and I only had just enough it's 2 to 1 resin to hardener by weight I'm mixing it thoroughly and then pouring it into the moulds. I literally had just enough to finish the uh, to finish the job. I'd rather overfill them a bit because they will um, shrink down. Here I am putting the uh, the moulds and the resin into the pressure pot. And just tightening up the lid with the giant wing nuts, doing them in order, making sure it's nice even pressure. Connecting up the compressor and then bringing it up to 60 pounds PSI. I then waited uh, 24 hours with the compressor connected and then we can equalize the pressure using the air release valve and once it's normalized we can then undo the lid and out they come. Bit of wrestling getting them out the mould but they've come out really well. came apart nicely just using a Stanley knife here to just separate them and then we're back out into the workshop remounting them between centres and I start by using the easy rougher just to true them up get them running true again I can see looking at the video that this one was slightly off centre but it doesn't really make much difference just truing up the ends using the easy detailer and I've turned it round so I can true up the other end just getting rid of a bit of excess resin and here I'm using my Jacobs chuck in the tail stock to drill a 3mm hole in the top where the cord's going to run and then using a uh, another drill bit in the other end to drill a quarter inch hole in the bottom where the knot's going to go. Keeping hold of the Jacobs chuck as I do that. I'm then mounting uh, between centres. I've got a step centre acting as the drive. Got my easy rougher. And this made short work of shaping these. 
And it was very, very easy. As the name would suggest, the easy rougher. Just bringing it down. You can tell when you've uh, reached round because you start um, getting long ribbons. Here I'm using the easy finisher, but I did get a tiny bit of chip out with this, but that's more down to the resin than anything. So I went back to the rougher. Just uh, finalising the shape really. You can see these long ribbons coming off, they're a right menace really, they get in the way. Kept having to stop to clear them. But I'm cutting on centre and keeping the tool level. Keeping the flat of the tool on the tool rest all the time and keeping that tool level with the floor. Just creating the bottom of the light pull and I'm using the detailer here. And this was very simple as well. There's no steep learning curve with these tools. You can just get straight on and use them really. As long as you follow the rules and don't be too aggressive with your cuts. Back to the rougher here just to create the round. Then the detailer, just sorting out the bottom there. And just about ready for polishing now. So we start with 400 grit paper. And then two coats of cellulose sanding sealer. I've watered this down a little bit with uh, cellulose thinners. Or should I say thinned it down a bit. Then Yorkshire grit. I put quite a generous amount of Yorkshire grit on. And then work it and work it and work it. Gets finer and finer and polishes it up beautifully. Then use a bit of burnishing cream. And that just gives the resin a final glass-like appearance. Put it on stationery and then buff it all away. Very satisfying seeing it come up like that. Looks just like glass. Very impressed with the uh, clear top. And here, just using my Robert Sorby parting tool. Just part it off the step centre. Then I'm using a uh, hand countersink tool just for deburring. Then we're back to do the second design. This is the other blank that I got off that piece of wood. Much the same. I've edited this down a bit just to speed it up. But uh, just using the detailer here again just to um, create that uh, bottom shape. And as I say, very quick to learn how to use these really. Well, it does get in there very nicely. Just rounding off that bottom. Now here, because we're going to be putting milliput in this one, I'm just creating some recesses each side of the resin that we're going to put the milliput into. I'm using a Robert Sorby micro parting tool for this. I love this little tool, it's great for putting neat little lines around things for milliput. Just neatening up the design, making sure the spacing's good. Brushing away all the dust. Then we're using super fine white milliput. Equal quantities, part A and B. You knead it and mix it really thoroughly for a good five minutes. I use the roll and fold technique. Roll it into a sausage, fold the ends into the middle and then keep doing that over and over and over again. Very important with the white. Really thoroughly mix that. And here I am squidging it into the recesses. You have to be very, very thorough. Make sure you don't leave any voids. In actual fact, these recesses were quite easy. You could push it in in uh, 
reasonably large quantity. Patting it all down, making sure it's all slightly proud of the surface. Then we leave it overnight to set thoroughly. Now for my favourite bit, cutting back the milliput. Here I'm using the Easy Rougher again, which uh, made short work of this job. You can see the pattern emerging. I always find this bit very satisfying. Yeah, there it is. Very pleased with how that came out. Sanding, 400 grit. Dusting. Two coats of sanding sealer. And then Yorkshire grit. Got lots of that on. And just keep working it until it gets finer and finer and you get this lovely polish. And then it's burnishing cream. Just for the final polish on that resin. Just bring it up like glass. Buffing it away. And then some microcrystalline wax. Put that on and leave it for a few minutes and then buff it all away. But hopefully uh, this wood should stay good because uh, it's been stabilised so it should be alright in bathrooms where it's uh, wet and humid. I'm just parting away. Deburring again. Job done. I've finished the light pulls. On the whole I'm very pleased with how they worked out. I did three different designs in the end. There's the uh, slightly narrower one which I think was Sapili. If I can get that to focus. And this other one which is uh, Walnut. And then I did another one. And that one's uh, with the Milliput. Each side of the um, clear resin. Things I would have done differently. Uh, if I turn that round, I um, don't know if you can see. If I turn that round, you might be able to see inside that some bits look white, and that's where I drilled out the centre, um, and it's gone through the wooden core in places where I've drilled it, and other bits it's wood. It looks better with just the wood. So next time I would leave that central wooden stem a little bit thicker so that the drill hole all stayed within the wooden core. But yeah, I'm very pleased with how they've come out. It was a bit of an experiment as to the way I finished them. And I was very pleased with how the um, Easy Wood tools performed. Really good. Uh, I sort of did as much as I could on this project with the Easy Wood tools. Um, just to really test them out and try them. And they, they cut everything brilliantly. I was getting a tiny bit of chip out on the resin at times, uh, but you'd expect that with any tools. And it is very cold out here. I'm trying to sort of warm it up a little bit, and uh, but it is freezing cold. Which uh, brings me on to the next thing. Um, it's been snowing outside uh, for, well, over a day now, which is unusual for this area. And uh, cold causes problems when you're doing resin work because you need to have the resin and the moulds at a certain temperature it needs to be at a sort of a warm room temperature so doing it in a cold workshop is not good you can get curing problems i can't afford to heat my whole workshop uh, and it would be too difficult to do it anyway so i decided to build a heated cabinet that the whole pressure pot fits inside um, and so uh, you can actually keep your moulds and resin at the correct temperature while it cures. Uh, it's also a very good way of preheating the pressure pots. It's a large metal container which can sap a lot of heat. So um, you can leave the pressure pot in the heated cabinet for a few hours and you can actually put your resin and your moulds inside it as well and preheat those, bring them up to a nice warm temperature. I'll give you a quick view of that in a moment. Um, just to round off the video uh, but thanks everyone for watching and thank you very much to all my subscribers and I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video and I'll be back soon with some more videos
Well, we always used to say you never get snow in this part of Hampshire. Well, we can't say that now. It's been snowing for hours and it's freezing cold. But is 20 degrees in there. Well here's my uh, heated cabinet for my pressure pot. I didn't want to apply direct heat to the pressure pot itself because I'm not sure whether that's safe or good for the pressure pot so I just decided to create a warmer environment to put it in. Very simple design, 18 millimeter ply and I've lined it with inch thick expander polystyrene and foil tape to reflect the heat. Simple door design, comes right off, um, it's not just uh, hinged you know, so I can put it in tight corners, I can just take the front off for easy access. There's a little spy hole here so that I can see the pressure gauge on the, um, on the top of the pressure pot. This is where the hose will go in from the compressor and uh, there's a little thermometer there, digital thermometer. So a couple of bolts holding on the, uh, the front. That's all lined, that's the sensor for the thermometer, that's the sensor for the thermostat. Put that to one side. And inside, we've got the pressure pot. Which I can move out of the way. There we go. Feels nice and warm. Just pop that to one side. Ethereum heat mats, these are very low wattage, I think that one's 11 or 12 watts and that one there is 22 watts and uh, cut out of the handles of the pressure pot and it's just enough to bring it up to the right temperature. I've put a little Vivarium thermostat it's there, um, just mainly it won't work so well at this time of year but perhaps in the summer it will stop it getting too hot. I hope you enjoyed that video slightly longer than usual but i had quite a lot to show we had uh, both vacuum and pressure involved and uh, also the new tools to try if i'm going to do a tool review i want to show them in action really um, it means a lot more and uh, i can give a much better view on them really but uh, good project um, lots going on and uh, be back soon with some more projects don't forget Maker Central, 5th and 6th of May. I'll put links to all of these things in the description. More rubbish coming soon. Thanks for that, Mia.